Hello, today I have the ARP 2600. Now, this is quite a famous synthesizer. It's a semi-modular synthesizer, meaning a lot of it is already pre-wired inside. I mean, without any of this spaghetti, you can get a lot of very good sounds out of it. But if you tinker about long enough, you have an infinite amount of sounds that you can make out of this beast. Now, even if you haven't seen one of these, chances are you've heard one. Close Encounters, the voice for R2-D2 even, all comes from one of these. Now, this has got a problem. Uh, one of the sliders is broken. It's on the release time here. And I've got to open it up and actually change the slider. I don't know how difficult that is going to be yet. The last time I went inside one of these was for a famous musician and he wanted the reverb spring extending because he bought the later model and for some strange reason they actually put a slightly shorter reverb spring in there. So I ended up putting one of these in for him. But anyway, that like I say, that was 20 years ago and I can't actually remember what it looks like in here. I think there's lots of separate little boards all over the place and a, a little bit of spaghetti going off inside there. But other than that, uh, no, my brain has forgotten. So it's going to be interesting for me to open this up and have a good look around inside there, see if I can sort this problem out and uh, put it back together and make it work again, hopefully. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that tab's broken off. But anyway, I'll get inside it, shall I? What do I need? Spanner. Oh no, I can undo them by hand. Ah, a bit loose. Sorry, that took a lot longer than I thought it would do. I've forgotten you actually have to remove the handle off the top because the handle, the screws are quite long and they go through the steelwork on the top. So even though you've undone everything, it's not going to come apart unless you remove the handle. Uh, and I couldn't quite remember that from 20 years ago. But anyway, I've got it open. I'm just going to try and wedge it up without damaging anything. And I'll get the camera and we can have a look around. Now that's always a bad sign when you have the odd screw floating around inside. And I can't figure out where it lives. Now I found the hole where this screw should live. So I'm going to put that in right now. Right, let's get this thing disassembled. Now the only worry with doing this is it's quite an old machine so you have to be very gentle with these or I could end up just breaking another one which I don't really want to do obviously and oh please don't break any more so I think the trick is as you're pulling the cap you've got to ever so slightly tilt it and that sort of helps to break it away without breaking the shaft off so that one faces to the left remember that one faces to the left right left right yeah you know what I mean <laughs> good they're all off. Right. Uh, I don't need to undo these ones because they're not actually on the circuit board. But all these other ones are sitting on the board. So to release the board, I've got to take off all the bolts off these mini jacks. So I had to stop to find a tool. And what it is, it's just a simple magnet. So I can pick those rings off easier. Now that should, I hope, be enough to get this thing out. All this power cable is in the way now. This is the uh, power plus 15 volts minus 15 volts and zero going to the power supply here onto each board and it's tagged up here so I'm gonna to have to cut that off I'll put a new one on later 
just not quite enough to stretch it over this corner down here. I know you could, probably can't see that in the camera, can you? Let me move you in a little bit. Yeah, this sort of uh, cable loom needs moving and it's just not quite stretching over this board here. Is it going to work? Oh, you're kidding me. Thank you. You beauty. Uh, this one. Okay. Turn on the soldering iron and let's get that off. Now somebody uh, replied in one of my other videos and said, why do I use one of these old solder suckers when I've got one of the electronic ones? And basically I've had this for nearly 40 years. I've still got the same tip on it, believe it or not. And it's sometimes it's just quicker and easier to use a soldering iron on one of these than it is to switch on the solder sucker machine and wait for that to heat up and things. So yeah. If I was doing a lot of desoldering, I would use the electronic solder sucker, but just for something like a potentiometer, this is fine. So I'm just going to clear away some of the solder off this pot first to make it easier to remove. Now, unfortunately, the board here is piggybacked and it's actually just about in the way of this one. I might be able to get a little bit of it off if I'm really careful. I don't want to burn that lead. So let's see if I can get a bit of it off. Yeah, it all helps. Right, let's just tilt that up. And see how lucky I'm going to be. I need something to just prise this up a little. Right, put the screwdriver in there and heat it from the back. Turn the screwdriver at the same time. I should be able to start lifting this out. There you go. And it's fallen away. But not completely. So I've it's a bit delicate. It is actually loose. It's wobbling around, so it's not actually soldered in. So with a bit of a wiggle, I might be able to work that out. Or maybe not. Help it with the screwdriver. reasonably easy job it's just uh, a little bit awkward trying to hold all the board in whilst you're doing this and the tabs are slightly bent as well there we go so there's the dead one can I get that to focus is it focused I don't know uh, and yeah, and basically it's just the shaft that has broken off the top there and stopped that from working. And this is going to be the replacement for it. Yes, it's modern, but it's a replacement for this. So that's going to go in place of that. And that's a, a one meg potentiometer there. So, right, this one to go in then. Now, I think that's going to be in line. I hope it is anyway.
and that should do it. Now I'll just bend these uh, tabs into place because these sort of grip the potentiometer. There you go. Now, just double check. I want everything in the center because it makes it easier to put it all back together. Like so. Uh, right. Yep. Everything looks good there. line that switch up and now you've got to get all these sliders to just line up so everything drops into place just nicely and it sounds easier than it is that little jack plug needs to go through there and I'll just check that that push button is lined up correctly there and with any luck, that's fixed. Uh, put a couple of screws in and flip it over. Well, everything's through the holes where they should be. Uh, yeah, you see, the job itself isn't very difficult. It's a reasonably easy job. It's just taking it all apart to do this. That's always the problem with uh, repairing things. You know, try, try and change a light bulb on your car and it can take you two hours. So I'm going to put this back together, fire it up, make sure it works. There we go, all back together. And now it has a release time slider. Uh, does it make a noise? Oh yes. So there you go, it's all back together again, and uh, yes, it makes a noise. Yeah, you can make some really crazy, strange, weird and wonderful noises with this device, but you can actually use it as a musical instrument as well. You can actually play music with it. Uh, but anyway, other than that, I've uh, done it now, fixed the release time on it, and it's all up and running and hopefully it'll last another 30 something years. Now there's plenty of videos on YouTube. I know I always say this. Have a look around and you know if you're more interested in what this thing does, have a look at what the professionals do because they're a lot better at it than I am. I just fix things. But anyway, there you go. I hope you found something useful in this video and thanks very much for watching. All the best. Bye bye.